And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're talking about the newest expansion for Dominion, the Dark Ages. Now, Dominion the Dark Ages comes with probably more cards for and as an expansion for Dominion than I've ever seen before. I think it's the largest expansion for Dominion. We've seen some large expansions before. We've had Intrigue, Seaside, Prosperity, um, and uh, the Hinterlands, but this one adds a ton. Not only does it add a ton, but it deviates from Dominion more than I've ever seen an expansion do so before. There's a lot of different cards in the game, so let's take a look at them. Now we're not gonna be able to go over every card in the game, just, well, there's a lot of them. So we'll be able to go over what I would consider some of the most important cards. And here are some of them. These are called shelters. You see they have those red lines on it. Although that red and white switch there is driving me nuts. But anyhow, these three cards replace the three starting estates that you have in your hand. And you say, well, man, they're, they're why would you want to do that? Well, that's a good question. Uh, this one's a reaction, this one's a victory point, and this one's an action. Now, it is interesting. This one's a plus two action. It's not a terrible card to have, but it certainly isn't one that you're going to want to keep in your hand for long. This one here, when you buy a victory card, you can trash this from your hand. So, okay, you're basically, once you buy, let's say you buy an estate or whatever you buy, your, your first thing that you buy, a province maybe, you can trash this and replace it with that. And this one here, when you trash this card, you get to draw another card. So, these are the three starting cards in your hand. Now, you, you're supposed to, if you're playing all Dark Ages cards, you're supposed to use all three of these. And then if you want to play with some Dark Ages, they have some kind of wonky thing. To me... They're interesting enough that I would replace the three starting estates with them. I have no problem with that. I didn't notice a huge effect on the game, but it does make it a little more interesting. So now let's look at some cards that I really like from this expansion, okay? Well, we're going to start here with the Bandit Camp. Now, the Bandit Camp is fun uh, because it gives you plus one card and plus two actions and gives you a spoils card. Now, this isn't the only card in the deck that gives you spoils, but the, when you use this, we put out a separate deck of spoils. Spoils are gold, basically. They're three coins. Uh, but when you play them, you have to return them back to the pile. So they're one-time use. But still, that's not a bad thing to put in your hand. And a card that gives you an extra card, two actions, and essentially a future gold is not a bad thing. I very much like the Bandit Camp. Then we have the Armory, which gains you a card costing up to four coins, putting it on top of your deck. Well, we saw this in the original set, except this one goes right on top of your deck. Having these at the beginning of the game is nice, because I like to stick those silvers right in the top of my deck for my next draw, or other cards that are worth four. The Count's a very interesting one. Uh, he, you choose one of two different groups. So you can discard two cards, or put a card from your hand on top of your deck, or gain a copper. Then you can take three gold, or trash your hand, or gain a duchy. Now this is interesting, because what you can do here is if you have a handful of cards that you want to trash, curses, or ruins, or which we'll talk about in a bit, or other cards, then you can discard your two good cards, or if you only have one good card, you put it on top of your deck. Or... Um, and, and then you can trash your whole hand. This is the only card I know that lets you trash your whole hand. At the same time, I might want that plus three gold and then I have to take a copper to get it or, you know, so that it's an interesting card and it offers a lot of options. Although for a new player, I think that'd be completely confusing. This is one of two reaction cards in a deck and this one I like a lot. Gain three coppers, putting them in your hand. Well, I almost never do that sort of nonsense, although there are times where I can do it. There are times where that comes in handy. But I do like the fact that when someone plays an attack card, I can gain two silvers. This is a good way to grab silvers and put them in your deck. The Fortress, I like that. This is a neat card because it's plus one card and plus two actions. When you trash it, put it in your hand. Now, this deck is all about trashing. There's tons of trashing. I just showed you the count. Mix the count with the Fortress, and you have cards that even though you trash them, they come back into your hand. And there's other people who can force you to trash cards. or There's different things in, in the game where you'll trash cards. And this is a neat way to ha trash a card without actually trashing it. I guess the theme of this, this uh, should they should have called this Dark Ages Trash. 
Here is a plus one action, plus one buy. Trash a card from your hand, and then you get plus one for every differently named treasure in the trash. Now I have actually trashed a gold deliberately to make the to increase the value of my foragers when I played with one. I thought that was a neat thing. A cultist is interesting. Plus two cards, and each other player gains a runes. And then you may play a cultist from your hand. So let's talk about runes. Here we have a deck of runes, and you're gonna put 10 of those in the game for two players, 20 for three players, 30 for four players, and if you're playing with five players, you should be playing a different game. But uh, ruins, there's different ones. Like for example, here, survivors. Look at the top two cards of your deck, discard them or put them back in any order. Um, here's an abandoned mine, plus one gold. Uh, then we have, let's see what else we got in here. The Ruined Village, plus one action. All these Ruined cards are like other cards, except not worth nearly as much. So they're not as bad as having a curse in your deck, but they're not really good either, and you're usually trying to get rid of them. Hunting Grounds is neat because it adds four cards to your hand. But when you trash this, you also get a duchy or three estates. I don't know why you take three estates. I'd rather have a duchy, but there's times where maybe three estates. But still, plus four cards. Add it to some decks with some actions, and it can be pretty neat. Now, one of the things I will mention is you can't just trash this because you want to. And so this is another reason not to play this with new people, because they would think that when you trash it, oh, I'll trash it to get a duchy. Well, no, you can't do that unless another card allows you to trash it. And if you use these cards... And in a set, let's say you mix a set with these and there are no ways to trash cards, which is possible, then you're kind of decreasing the value of some of these cards. Here's the other reaction card that's in the set. I like this one. I mean, instantly the plus one card, plus one action, plus one buy is nice. But when one of your cards is trash, you can discard this to get a gold. Well, that's a neat combo. I like that. Here's a Marauder, gain of spoils. And each other player gains a Ruins. So if you have this in the deck, you're going to need to have the Ruins deck and the Spoils deck. So that's two extra decks you'll need to add. Here's a very confusing looking card. And this is not the only card in the game that looks this confusing. It gives you plus two. And then if there's any cards in the trash that cost from three to six, you gain one of them. Otherwise, each other player reveals top two cards of his deck, trashes one of them, costing from three to six, and discards the rest. That sounds confusing, but it can be really handy, especially in a game where there's a lot of heavy trashing going on, because people will be careful what they trash, knowing that you might get it. Um, and then if there isn't a lot of trashing going on, well then you can make people trash one of them and then get it later on. It's an interesting card. There's a reason that it's a five attack card. Uh, and regardless of all that, also a plus two gold, a nice addition. The Squire is one of my favorite cards. One, because it's a cost of two, and there's not enough good two-costing cards, in my opinion. But I like the plus one gold, and then I can take two actions, two buys, or get a silver. And when it's trash, you get an attack card for free. Which, if it's in the same deck as Rogue, that's pretty cool. So I like the Squire. Rats. Now, this is a game-changing card. There's a few cards that I consider game-changing, like Pirate Ship and other cards like that. This is one of those cards. When you play this, you get a draw card in action, and then you get another Rats. And then you trash a card from your hand that's not a Rats card. Uh, when you actually do trash the Rats card, for whatever reason, you, you gain plus one card. But... What happens is you're going to be tempted to take these rats because it's a way to trash cards from your hand and hey, you get to draw a card and you get an extra action. But every time you play the rats, you get more rats and more rats. And there's more than just 10 rats. I believe there's 20 or maybe even 30 of them. There's a lot of rats in the game. So if you play with rats, you can have a whole deck full of rats and then you have to get rid of the rats. The rats are useful to clear your deck out and it can give you a nice streamlined deck at the beginning of the game but near the end. Woo! Okay, so it's an interesting card, but you have to be careful with it. This is one of my favorite cards, maybe my favorite card in the set. I like it. It's worth a point for every three silvers, and when you trash it, you get three silvers. So if this is in the, the mix with a card that lets you trash cards, it's very entertaining because you can uh, get these in your deck, which they'll be worth points, but you're also tempted to blow them up to make all your other... Fiodor Fiodomes, or whatever that means, to get more, to make them worth more points. And besides, getting three silvers is not a bad thing. So I like that. All right, let's talk about a few other cards. There's a couple cards in the game. Oh, here's two of them in particular. Uh, a madman and a hermit. Now, the madman, uh, well, actually, let's reverse those just so we don't get confused. A hermit. Hermit lets you look through your discard pile, trash a card from there. Uh, from your discard pile or hand that's not a treasure, and then you gain a card that's up to three. Eh, 
that's an okay ability. However, when you discard it from play, if you don't buy any cards, then you can trash the Hermit and you take a Madman. So if you play with the Hermits, you have to put a pile of Madman on the table. So it's possible to have uh, Ruins, Spoils, Madmen and Curses. That's a lot of extra piles. But the Madman is great because he gives you plus two actions. You return him to the pile, and if you do that, you get plus one card for every other card in your hand. Well, that's a pretty awesome thing. Plus two actions and likely plus four cards. Nice. All right. The problem is you have to go through the Hermit to get to the Madman. That's not the only combo in this game. We also have an Urchin Mercenary combo. You, you can... Let's take a look at these here. The Urchin's a plus one card, plus one action, everyone discards down to four. But if you play another attack card, you can trash him and then get the Mercenary. The Mercenary there is a great card where you can trash two cards from your hand. If you do, you get plus two cards, plus two, and everyone else discards down to three. It's a pretty nasty card. I don't know how Urchins be, end up becoming Mercenaries. It seems like it'll be a much longer story, but hey, what have you. Again, this adds another extra pile to the game of mercenaries. So, there you go. You could have lots of extra piles. You probably need to control yourself so they don't uh, get overboard. Alright, let's talk about knights. If you put the random knights pile in the game, they're not actually not called knights. They actually have different names. Like here's Dame Anna, and Dame Natalie, and Sir Bailey. And each of these knights has the same ability where everyone else shows two cards and they have to trash one of them that costs from three to six and discard the rest. All right? And then they have a different ability. So she'll give you a card that calls up the three. He'll give you plus one card, plus one action. The Dame Josephine is worth two victory points. However, if you do this and when the card that you trash is a knight, then your knight is trashed also. So lots of fighting going by. The knight is almost another game-changing card because when one person starts buying knights, he almost forces everyone else to buy knights because they are so annoying. You're constantly trashing cards, so you need to stick a knight in your deck if for no other reason than to blow up your opponent's knight. There's some other cards in the game that I'm not as fond of necessarily, and I call these the reveal cards. Here you plus one act card, plus one action, reveal the top card of your deck, whatever it is, you get something else. Okay, that's not a bad card. Um, Here's plus one to, to trash victory point cards and get the better victory point cards. This one, the Mystic, where you name a card, if, and if it is the name card, you put it in your hand. I don't know. I may, I've been using that a lot in Ascension, I guess, and I'm still not convinced that that's worth it. I mean, you can, you're guessing. Yes, you can, you can hook it up to some degree, so you put a card on top of your deck. And yeah, there's combos that you can pull off with the Mystic. But I'm not sold on that card, and I don't really like using it that much. Here, reveal top three cards, put the actions back on top in any order, and discard the rest. You know, there's a lot of these reveal cards. Reveal it if it's a curse, ruins, shelter, or victory card, put it in your hand. Okay, they're not bad. Um, this plus one card, plus one action. And for two points, the Vagrant isn't terrible, but... You know, it is what it is. And again, there's other cards that deal with trashing. Here's the altar in the catacombs. Uh, the altar lets you trash a card, and then you get a card that costs up to five. So you could get... It's an interesting thing. You could get rid of a copper, basically, to take up to a five-cost card. It's an interesting idea, and it's great at the beginning of the game, and then goes down as the game goes by. So there's a few more cards I didn't show you, but that's basically what... A, a lot of what is in the game right now. Um, there's some more powerful cards. Oh, let me show you this one because it's cool. Pillage. If you trash this card, you only get to use it once. But everyone else reveals their card and discards a card that you choose, and then you get two spoils. So it's a fun card to play, um, but it is just a, a one-time use. Um, so there's, like I said, this 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 expansion is all about trashing cards. All right, let's get to the opinion. All right, there's a lot of things going on in Dominion of Dark Ages. <laughs> There's a lot. So before I get into my spiel, Melody, did you have any thoughts you want to say about Dominion, the Dark Ages? I had. I really liked this because it was fun, the different things that I especially liked the Count. That was a fun card. Did you like the rats? Mm, sort of. At first. At yeah. first you liked the rats. And then and you realized really annoying. they take your deck up. <laughs> okay, here's my deal. I am kind of ho-hum on this expansion, but not for the reasons you think. I think it's interesting. I think there's all kinds of cool effects. It's neat, but it's almost taking... I don't know how to explain it. Let me try to break it down for you. First of all, this is not for someone who's never played Dominion before. 
this is, it's so confusing and so convoluted at many of the cards. Players who've never played before, you know, the, the original sets were very straightforward, okay? There's not much straightforward about this. There's a few cards that are, but most of them are not. Trashing cards from your hand when you first play Dominion doesn't make much sense. As you go by, you're like, oh, that's a pretty cool strategy. Well, this is all about trashing cards. So if you've never played Dominion before, this is the very last expansion I would recommend for you. Um, not because I don't like it as much as the other expansions, um, but just because there's all that going on. Secondly, it works very well with a as its own set. In fact, I think that the, the base cards, this is a great reason to buy them because you can put them with Dark Ages and play it as its own game. I haven't mixed it with all the different sets yet. Uh, most of the games that I played of Dark Ages have been Dark Ages alone, but the cards work well together. And several of these cards, especially trashing, aren't going to mesh as well with the other sets. Well, we'll try. I'll throw everything up and see what happens. Um, that being said, there are some things I really like. I like the three new starting cards. Ruins are neat. Spoils are neat. The beggar turning into a mercenary, or the urchin turning into a mercenary, and the hermit turning into a madman, that's a neat idea, but in actual playing, it's almost a kind of a pain in the neck. And this set, more than any others, has the possibility for one person to sit there and play through their whole deck while you sit there and watch. Which, you know, this is, it's not super intuitive, these cards. Okay, but let's say you can get past all that. You're, you're great, this is, you're, you're ready to play the game and you're ready to look at all this and you understand Dominion and who cares, bring on more. So where does it lie on what I like? Uh, Prosperity is my, by, still by far my favorite expansion and Seaside is right behind that. Uh, after that, it kind of, you know, there, I like Hinterlands and Intrigue, probably the same. And, and then Cornucopia and Alchemy. Alchemy probably still is my least favorite. This I'd put above Cornucopia and Alchemy because it has all these new ideas, but I, I still would get Prosperity first. I still would get uh, Seaside first. I like those because the, when I play them, it's just like, woohoo! When I play this, it's like, oh, that's interesting, that's cool, but it's it convoluted and it's really kind of trying to watch other people take their turns. You're like, I, I think you're doing the right thing. That seems like something you're allowed to do. There's a lot more attack cards in this. I don't know. It, I'm not feeling like, woo, about this expansion. It's interesting, and I'm certainly glad to have more variety in Dominion. Certainly glad to have more cards, but overall, I'm kind of just like, huh, that's interesting, that's fun, uh, but let's be careful about springing this on the new players. But you said you really liked it? Mm. All right, well, just goes to show what I know. I think it's a good expansion, but I'm wondering if maybe they should stop now. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.